Four uh, on the U.S.-China trade talk, let's uh, bring in our guest, Senator David Perdue, uh, Republican of Georgia. Been a while, Senator. Uh, it is uh, excellent to see you this morning. Good morning, Welcome. guys. The, uh, so many things swirling around, uh, especially in what's happened in the last uh, week or so. What, what, what are your just overall thoughts of where we are and what's, what's going to transpire over the next 24 hours? Well, Joe, I, I used to live over there, and I've, I've traveled over there recently. Um, negotiations with China are not linear, and so this was not really expected. Uh, it's uh, disappointing that last week we did hear that uh, the Chinese were backing up from some of the things that we thought we had earlier agreements on. But the fact that the Vice Premier Lu Ha is coming uh, today and we are entering into the negotiations again today, uh, I think are encouraging. So I'm very hopeful that Mnuchin and Bob Lighthizer will be able to get us back on track where we were last week, uh, Joe. And do you think where we were last week is more than just half measures for what China is willing to take? Because that's the one thing that ke keeps coming back with people that I guess are somewhat cynical about any advances that we can make with the Chinese, that they're just not going to be able to change their basic structure of the way they approach commerce and, and the economy. That, that it, it, some of the things are just sort of systemic to their system and all will get are uh, some slight changes at the margin. Well, they have political uh, realities just like we do. But let's remember that the last five presidents have ignored this issue. And what President Trump is trying to do is create a level playing field. If they can ship rice here, we should be able to ship rice there. This equal access is just very basic and common trade practice. The problem is the last 40 years, we've dealt a better hand to them than we've dealt to the American worker. And what President Trump is trying to do is say, look, we're going to protect our interests. We know you've been protecting yours. And let's get serious about this. It's going to take a long time. The president said when we started these negotiations, Joe, this is not going to be done overnight. They've got decades of bad practices, as you said. They've been violators of WTO since the day they were allowed in. And we are just standing up now, uh, establishing our interest to determine that we're going to stand up for our rights and our workers. And I, I, I applaud the president. I don't like tariffs any more than anybody else, but I absolutely think we have a bipartisan support for standing up for American interest here. So what happened? Do you have any granularity on that? And, and how many things did they completely uh, renege on in the well, last they didn't, they didn't break the whole deal. I mean, what, what they are really doing is, the, I believe there are interests in China who are saying, who have not been involved in the negotiations, are really coming to realize what they're going to have to do, as you said, to change and, you know, eliminate the theft of technology, to remove this barrier that uh, is forcing technology into joint ventures. And the cyber warfare is not, uh, not abated. I mean, what, what's happened is their rhetoric has come back, Joe, in the last six months, but their actions really haven't slowed down in these nefarious actions, and that's what we're looking for. I mean, could she, with his personal relationship with President Trump, could he say we're going to put these things into law with the uh, Congress over in China? That's one of the sticking points that, that the administrative laws that, that we want, that they're agreeing to, that we want it actually on the books in, in China. And they, they, they hesitated to do that. Could he get that done quickly? The best, or, or? the best thing we have going right now is that President Xi Jinping and President Donald Trump have a personal relationship. They have both done favors for each other. They talk to each other directly. I think there's a mutual respect, but both have political realities. I want to reiterate that, that China is not a monolithic uh, leadership. President Xi Jinping has his own pressures there to maintain uh, solidarity around what they're trying to do. But remember, they're the ones that published Made in China 2025. They're the ones that have this Belt Road Initiative around the world. They're the ones that are violating the, the common trade practices of the established by the World Trade Organization. So there's a lot of changes that have to happen in their structure moving forward. President Xi Jinping has actually said, though, when we pushed back on Made in China 2025, he said, well, that was really aspirational. We're going to rewrite that. But, the, you know, we'll see if they're serious today, tonight, tomorrow uh, in these negotiations. I'm very hopeful that they'll come with something very strong that we can avoid going to the next level. But let me be very clear. President Trump is not kidding here. He will go to the 25% tariffs. We will suffer some pain inside this country for a while, but this is the right thing to do long term to get China to stand up and do the right thing relative to our trade relationship. All right, Senator. Thank you. Good Senator. to see you guys. All right. Good.